Hello, Moon Babies. It's Molly. Thank you so much for being here. It is raining like hell today, <laughs> and it's a perfect day for me to settle in and do a little bit of studio work, and I realize it's been kind of a while since we've done anything in the studio together, so I thought it would be fun for us to spend this time together. And the project that I wanted to begin to approach today is creating an oracle deck um, for my own personal use. And I've been feeling compelled to start this project for a while. Um, I'm a big collector of oracle and tarot decks. And what I'm finding is that uh, more and more personal symbols are beginning to gain momentum and have meaning for me in my practice that are not apparent in other decks, in other people's interpretation of the deck. So I thought it's time for me to work on something to use in my practice, to use in my circle. Um, so that's what we're going to do today. And I'm just going to be using a deck of playing cards that I picked up from the drugstore as the base because I would like them to all be the same size and easy to shuffle. And these are also, um, they're not super sturdy but less flimsy than like a business card. So I'm going to see how well they accept media. So I don't really have a plan. We're just going to hang out and see what happens. <laughs> So the basic idea that I'm going to run with in creating this deck for myself is uh, being inspired by and drawing upon feminine archetypes as presented in pop culture. So creating a deck uh, that is a pop pantheon for me to draw inspiration from. So I've just printed out a few um, images that I'm going to paste together and add a whole bunch of materials to. And I've just started my cards by putting a little bit of satin finished spray paint on them just to just to have something for the media to grip onto when I get there. And I'm actually going to leave them this way. I like the idea of the existing images popping through in a palimpsest fashion. I like mixed media with a lot of layers. So I'm looking forward to this. I really have no idea how this is going to turn out. I don't have much of a plan. I'm just going to play. It's the new moon in Leo, babes. Like we're just going to play. We're going to go with it. <laughs> and I'm not actually sure how many of these cards I'm going to make. Um, obviously I'm going to make more than the four I'm creating today, but I wonder what, what a whole deck of 52 cards would look like. I kind of like the challenge of that. <laughs> That's something to consider. This is a quartz point that I dug up on my trip to Arkansas last fall. And I like to juice up my art workings with charged waters. So I'm going to be using this charged up gem water, pop that guy right in there, to mix up all of my paints and inks for the project I'm going to use today.
So I just wanted to show you how some of the backgrounds are developing. Um, this one, I'm just playing with dragging uh, different types of paint across. I have a little bit of decoupage going here and just layers of acrylic paint. And this one, I'm playing with spattering uh, paint from a toothbrush and then getting in while the paint is still wet with the end of a brush or a palette knife and digging through to reveal the colors underneath. This is a, a scruffito technique. Um, it's just scratching through the layers, building up some texture. On this one, I'm experimenting with, um, again, that scruffito technique. I used a palette knife here to just scrape away paint that I put down while it's still wet and then decoupaging um, with a little bit of this Maj Paj product. You don't have to get Maj Paj to do this. Um, if I'm out of Maj Paj, I just use Elmer's school glue. Um, it can do the trick depending on how large a surface area you're working on. Um, and with this, I painted some of the tissue paper beforehand and then layered it over so that you can still see the paint through. And on this one, we're whoops, <laughs> playing with doing some drawing underneath in a dark color and dragging paint over the top, adding some stickers and additional patterns over the top. I do want them to feel rich and have some depth, but I'm trying to be selective about how much stuff I pile on top with glue because I would still like them to be easy to shuffle when they're all in a deck and I worry that if if it, the surface is built up too far, it's going to become difficult to actually use the card. So I'm trying to keep that in mind uh, while these are in process. So I think we're starting to reach completion on this first set and I wanted to, I guess, tell you a little bit about why I chose these particular divine divas, I guess, to speak about. Um, this is, some of you will recognize this, I grew up watching Star Trek at my house and Captain Janeway captain of the Starship Enterprise um, has always been a heroine to me she's about leadership about a cool headedness and also uh, a taste for adventure leadership so I chose to include Captain Catherine Janeway in my Oracle deck this is an image of Mae West and she's a hero she is was excuse me <laughs> a brilliant businesswoman sex symbol she did so much to push the boundaries of what was sexually and socially acceptable for women and not only was she a very famous actress but she was an incredibly prolific writer wickedly funny owned her body, owned her sexuality, and made it work for her. So as a performer, she has always been a source of inspiration. This is an image of Wendy O, uh, the singer for the punk rock outfit, The Plasmatics. And I remember discovering her in high school and it really cracking a whole world wide open for me about what you could do on stage 
but I chose to include her in this deck because she embodies an heiress energy and I see her as sort of a goddess of chaos. And finally, here we have an image of Frida Kahlo. You guys know I love Frida. And this image, I chose this image uh, for a really specific reason. We usually see Frida with her very public face with all of the elaborate, uh, colorful, dramatic costume. And this is a picture of her wearing a suit, uh, enjoying a cigarette. I believe this is a picture from her backyard. I love Frida for a lot of reasons, but I wanted to choose this image in particular because Frida, this describes for me a being comfortable in your own skin. She was equally as comfortable with her masculine as she was her feminine. Um, she really is a queen of giving no fucks about integrity and speaking through your work. And I chose to use this dressed down image of her for that reason. I also want to include her in this deck, not only as a source of inspiration, but she's definitely a figure that reminds us that we can endure so much more suffering than we think is possible and still lead an incredible life. So I really, really hope that you moon babies enjoyed this little bit of sacred studio time with me today. I certainly enjoyed spending it with you. I'm let me know if you guys are interested in how this deck is progressing. I might not make a video every time I create cards as I think that that would become a little dreary for you. But if you're interested in seeing how it progresses, maybe I can post them to the blog. Um, some detailed images and reasons I chose the figures and how I came to the final product. Let me know if you're interested in that. And thank you so, so much for being here with me, Moon Babies. And until next time, witch on and witch boldly. Bye-bye.